We're here with Senator Cory Booker, a member of the Senate Commerce Committee. You're about to talk with AEI with a Republican about the Digit Act, as well as some ways that for bipartisan efforts on technology. Tell me a little bit about what you're going to say. Well, first of all, we got to find a lot of bipartisan space, uh, and I've been working really hard because technology, innovation, uh, creating constructive strategies for the future must be bipartisan, and it's a great area to work with. I'm, I'm blessed uh, to be working with Senator Fisher here. She's been my Republican partner on getting America ready for one of the biggest transformative forces in our society, which is the coming Internet of Things, with billions and billions and billions of devices now being connected. It's going to transform everything from healthcare to transportation to manufacturing. It's going to have trillions of dollars of impact on our economy. The problem I often see is that government's not ready for it. It's not uh, supporting it. Sometimes it's undermining uh, the potential for innovation. And I want America to continue to lead in this space. Senator, I want to talk about healthcare a, a little bit later, but talk to me about this proposal that you've uh, that has bipartisan support to create a public-private partnership uh, in which folks would get together to submit recommendations, if you will, on how the Internet of Things should be regulated. Yeah, well, you have multiple nodes within federal government that focus on innovation and technology, uh, from the Commerce Department all the way to the uh, you know uh, 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 you know FCC, frankly. So, so we've got to make sure that we are aligning strategies and not looking in silos, but understanding entrepreneurial and innovation uh, must be supported by all folks within the government, but also somebody who found this out when I was mayor, critical that we have public-private partnerships, uh, that the innovators, that the investors, that uh, people who understand uh, fairness and equality, justice issues are all being part of a conversation so that we can coordinate and do big things, coordinate strategy, coordinate our ideas, coordinate our investments in some cases because government makes tremendous investment in this space. Now, this particular issue is bipartisan, but you've also proposed something that has not had so much Republican support, but it involves ways to provide internet access to rural communities. Talk to me a little bit about that. And obviously, in a Republican-controlled Congress, there won't be much appetite for it. But why is that important? Well, first of all, there is uh, some Republican uh, support for it, especially because we have a lot of Republican senators, or and if, especially Congress people, who represent rural red state areas, and they want things like broadband penetration as well. Uh, they want something. They want their kids to have access to the inter information superhighway uh, as well. So a lot of things I'm doing in this space. You might not think that they have uh, bipartisan support, but again, uh, you know, I, I told New Jersey folks, I came down here to be a New Jersey senator, not a, uh, a Republican or a Democrat, but somebody who's fighting for New Jersey. So in my state, broadband penetration is important. And, and again, we are America. We should be leaders in areas like this. If South Korea is beating us in broadband penetration and their children are getting the tools they need to compete on a global society, we need to make sure uh, that our, our kids uh, have those same opportunities to cultivate their genius. You mentioned health care. I want to ask you about health care because earlier today, President Trump tweeted out uh, that Democrats, as well as members of the House Freedom Caucus, should be opposed uh, if they are going to block uh, reforms to the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare. Now, there's an analyst report out today saying that Anthem might withdraw from some of the Obamacare exchanges. Is, can lawmakers work together to fix parts of Obamacare to make sure that the glitches, if you will, are fixed? Well, remember, right before Trump was elected, Standard & Poor's came out and said the exchanges are solid and, and, and great things are happening. Now he's president and he is doing things and has the potential to do things to weaken these exchanges. So insurance companies who need uh, um, to have you know, reliability and predictability are now hearing from the president of the United States that he's going to do things that undermine the economic strength, uh, potential economic strength of these exchanges. So I understand why some companies are starting to do things in reaction to Donald Trump, not the strength of the Affordable Care Act. And so this is very frustrating. And then to see on top of this, this cannot, you cannot govern through a tax. Uh, you've got to find a way to bring people together. The failure of, of his Trump care and the Paul Ryan and Republicans bill is a testimony to you can't get from point A to point B um, by attacking other people not being inclusive. Even the Affordable Care Act, there were 147 Republican amendments to Obamacare because they were reaching out uh, over 100 committee meetings and other meetings to try to get people's input. Even though people want to say that was jammed through, there was a tremendous process that they went through getting public-private input onto that bill. This has to be the way to govern. And the way I, when I see these tweets, I, I almost feel just uh, um, 
you know, it just, it's just, I shake my head because here's a guy when, at a time that America needs us to come together and do great things. He's attacking promiscuously. People in the Republican Party is attacking, Democratic Party is attacking. That's no way to lead to govern. He's a president of the United States of America. He's not president of some parts, some sections. He, I'm hoping that we're going to hear more about him being a leader that's calling us all to our higher angels or better angels. Just one final question. I know you've got to get in there. Tax reform. That's been something uh, that has dominated uh, the, at least financial uh, conversations recently. Is there any chance? He's, there's been some reports that he wants to work with Democrats. Is there any chance that you could see some type of comprehensive tax reform with this White House? Well, the ball's in his court. We know the tax system is not serving our interests. It's incentivizing people to move investments and businesses overseas, invert their companies. We have a tax system that punishes small businesses by paying extraordinarily high corporate tax rates, while large corporations find creative ways, lobbying here in Congress, get loopholes where they're paying effectively uh, or essentially no taxes. This is a broken system. Everybody agrees with that. What leadership does now is reaching out to those, all the different factions within Congress and says, how can we work together? A guy is bragging about being a great deal maker. Frankly, Republican and Democrat, Bush, uh, Clinton, Obama, he's proving himself in these short periods to be the worst deal maker that I have seen in the early months of their presence. Senator Cory Booker, we know you're busy. We know you've got to get in there. Thank you for talking to Bloomberg TV. We appreciate that.